Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Foreman Community Demo. Uh, Melanie is out today, which is why uh, I'm hosting. And uh, unfortunately, this is pre-recorded and not broadcasted live, but we are available for questions later on on the Foreman or on the YouTube in the comments or this course. So, Foreman 3.2 RC1 is available, so please go ahead and test that. Uh, that's actually the main thing I had to announce. Uh, Ron had a little announcement before his demo, and he'll also be demoing right out after. So, Ron, to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Oh, Ron, I'm still sharing the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you see it? Yes. Great. So if you can make it a little bit bigger. That would be great. Thanks. So here over the comments, uh, you can see I link to the um, to the post about the uh, browser support. Uh, it's been open for a, a month, and there were no concerns for, from the community. We also demoed it uh, last time. And now it officially got updated in our uh, website, in the Foreman Org uh, nightly. So you could see in in our guide uh, the deprecation. We've updated the browser compatibility. Basically, we dropped uh, finally um, Internet Explorer, as as Google Search uh, also dropped it, and many many other uh, websites. And it's kind of soon to be end of life. Uh, so we support uh, Chrome, Edge, which basically uh, is based on Chromium, uh, Safari latest version, Mozilla Firefox latest version, and also uh, Firefox extended support release. Uh, this one, which is actu actually developed for large organization, universities, uh, businesses, and most of Linux user I don't know if most, but many Linux users uh, use Firefox, so we also support that. Uh, yes, that that was the announcement. If you have still any concern, please uh, raise it. It will be this. This support is only from uh, free free, which is the nightly release. Um, so yeah, if any question. Uh, Big mean in the chat or in the YouTube or in community. Uh, so I can move to the next topic. We just migrated to a new reports uh, plugin and reports format. Uh, Lukash was working on, on the way to actually uh, switch from the old reports to the new one. So if you if you will go uh, inside form and to the reports page you will see a deprecation message that actually links to this page in the community. And here, Lucas just updated yesterday uh, the upgrading uh, process. With the Foreman installer, uh, you need to enable the new plugin. It's a proxy plugin. If you use Ansible, uh, you need to switch to proxy type here. And if you use Puppet, uh, you currently need to manually run uh, those four commands. Uh, there's also some configuration you need to update in the proxy with trusted host. And, yeah, and we are also working on um, rake task migration, uh, which will probably will, will get in uh, next week or the one after that, which will help you migrate the old reports to new one. But basically, the new the new reports is uh, is available. And I wanted to show you another thing we added in the new host page. Uh, this one just got merged. It's, it it will be part of uh, Foreman uh, Free Two. So now the reports tab for a specific host. You can you can view all reports, both uh, Puppet and Ansible here. And when you click on on one of the reports, 
it will take you to um, oh sorry let's click on it it will take you to a show page for that uh, report this is a, a new page and there's also index page in the host reports we will also work on that uh, to make it look look the same as as the reports tab and we are also currently working with the community on reusing the same uh, the same reports uh, table for puppet tab and ansible tab it, it will live under a uh, i think puppet reports so the table will be specific to puppet and the same for ansible and that's it any questions Thank you, Ron. We will move to Adi to talk about the new reports dashboard widget. Hi, everyone. And let me just share my screen. Um, can you see it? Yes. Could you make it a little bit bigger? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so in addition to what uh, Ron explained, uh, we have added widgets that corresponded to the host report plugin. Uh, they have the same functionality as the latest, the la latest uh, report uh, widgets, sorry. Um, but now the data is based on the host reports plugin. And has the same functionality. And if you have any comments or something that we should know, uh, you can leave a comment or whatever. Um, that's it, I guess. Thank you, Adi. I don't see any questions from here. So next up, uh, Partha with import expert of repositories. Hey there, uh, let me share my screen. Can you guys see my browser? I see it very tiny. Oh, is that better? I'm trying to make it bigger. No, no, not uh, for some reason. Your screen okay. might just be me. Does everyone else see the browser regularly? I can see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's then good. something that's why that's fine. All right. So, the, in the previous import export commands we had, we had a way to do we we had a way to export a version. And we had a way to export the library itself. Uh, those were the two ex export endpoints we uh, we offered before. Uh, this print we worked on a new thing to export a single repository because a lot of users requested that. So you can, for example, you can just choose to have this Catello repository exported or any of these guys individually by themselves. And you do that by using the same hammer endpoints we have. Uh, so let me go to my terminal. So you see it's the same, it's the same repositories here that I was showing in the UI before. So to export to export this version, this repository. We have the same content export endpoint. You have complete or incremental. Uh, you can do either one. And you can say, let it enter. You should see something called a repository. Now, this was this is a new thing. This was not there before. This is the work we've done. So we can say repository. You, give an, you can give it a repository ID. You can give a product name if you prefer that. So 
it exports as as expected uh, and you can you can actually see a file you can see the exports generated here in this directory uh, oops sorry so uh, oh yeah sorry I forgot to paste yeah it should be sudo okay there you go so you see a 20 megabyte export of this Cotello repository now we can we can now import it in a new organi new satellite so i'm going to just create a new org here for demo purposes so i'm just going to say organization create name equals import And I'm going to import what I just exported there. Uh, copy that path, okay. Let me reset this again. Okay. Content, import. Again, you will see a new extension endpoint here called repository. So you can say repository. What is the new organization? Do you see an organization there? The uh, I flag available. So let's let's do use that. So hammer content import repository. This newly created arc, like so. So we're we're just going to try to import what we just exported. We need, we need to give a metadata file. That that was one of the comments. So metadata two JSON, and we say organization the one we just created import. So you can now go to the UI. Uh, let's reload this page right, so they can get the new org that I just created. <clears throat> I click on import uh, org because I, that's a different org. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I had to go products. So in my import org, you see a product called prod with the same name. And you see Catello has been imported here. So it's, it uses the same mechanism as uh, content view version in the, under the hoods. So it just creates a content view as the repository exports that. And we added like, uh, uh, we, we, we can, and when you delete the repository, it automatically deletes the generated content view. So we have we have a lot of logic there uh, in trying to like not confuse the user by showing generated content views. Uh, but it, but that's that's the way it works under the hood. Uh, it's pretty much what I had for the demo. So. Thank you, Partha. Next up, Chris with the Lato Stream host details. All right. Hey, let me share my screen here. Okay, just a little bit. There we go. Can you see that at all? Yes, we can. It would also help if it was a little bit bigger, but okay. Yeah, let me make it one more. I think if I do one more after this, it will break the. Yeah, yeah, this this is good. Thank you. Okay. So this is the old module stream page. I have a, a CentOS 8 host here uh, with a couple of module streams enabled. And we can see here that it shows the status and so forth. So what I want to do is show the new page. 
Uh, so we'll go to host, all host. I started with this page just to show the comparison of those. Uh, we go to content, and module streams. Uh, so this is the new module stream page. We still have the link to the old page here. Uh, so what's different here is that we do, it still links back to the module streams uh, where you can see that in the content side. Uh, instead of just having a, like a display where it says enabled though, we actually have, this will turn green, um, this will turn gray if it's disabled, and then the default is uh, white. We have the installation status here. Uh, this will actually show either, um, it'll gray out if it's not installed like you see below, it'll either return a check mark and up to date, or if the module streams are outdated, it'll return a, an up arrow, a blue arrow saying it's upgradable. Um, and then here we have the installed profile. Uh, and we can search just like before. Uh, so that works. Um, the pagination, we can do that. Uh, and so forth. So the only thing that's not working right now, and this is coming along um, later on, is the actions. So these are disabled right now. Um, and then we'll also be adding filter uh, to be able to search by, or filter by certain statuses and so forth. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show. Thank you, Chris. And our last presenter for today, Jeremy, about install packages model. Thanks, sorry, let me share my window here. Uh, so I know this text is a little bit small, but hopefully you can kind of see it, but it, it doesn't really matter for this one. Um, it's it's going to be bigger on the other tab, but anyway, I'm here to show you the install packages modal. Uh, this is this is our current interface. I'm going uh, kind of in the same format as Chris here. Uh, so if you have a host and you want to install a package on the host, where do you go? You go here to the Packages tab. There's kind of this weird drop down, and you have to go to Package Actions. And then you have to select Package Install from this drop down, and you have to type in the package name that you want to install on the host. Uh, so I think this is an area that we've made a, a pretty big improvement in the new page um, because what we do is we show you a list. Um, here you can see a list of packages that are already installed. And then if we go over here to install packages, we get this modal, which is a beautiful list of all the packages that can be installed on the host. And this is actually calculated. What it's doing is it it says, give me every package available in this host's content view and lifecycle environment, and then subtract all the packages that are already installed. And that's how it gets this list. So if this table ever takes a, a couple seconds to load, uh, that's what it's doing. Uh, but it's, it's usually not too bad. I was actually able to improve it uh, quite a bit. So you've got a familiar interface here. You can use uh, the multi-select. You can select all. Um, and there's also a search box. You can use the familiar scoped search syntax. Um, well, if I type things right, scoped search syntax works, or you can just type the package name that you want to install, and that'll come up too. So once you've determined what you want to install, this install button becomes available. Uh, the, the default is to re use remote execution, or you can also customize it if you want. If you do have Catello Agent available and enabled, uh, the default will be to use Catello Agent. But today we're using remote execution. So if I click install, I get this uh, notification here that I can see the task. But what, what I like to do personally is go to the host details overview. Because uh, there's this recent jobs card that shows the remote execution jobs that are well, recently executed on the host. And we can see here, 16 seconds ago, that package has already uh, succeeded to install on the host. So what, what was the package name? It was camel, right? Uh, so if I go back to my install packages modal, I can see 
that Camel is no longer on the list of available packages to install. Rather, it's going to be on the list of packages that are installed. Uh, you might be wondering, what about this upgrade button and what about removing packages? Those are both coming soon. Uh, Lucy just merged that in, and uh, hopefully that'll be in the next demo. So that is the new package install modal. And uh, that's it for me. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jeremy. Uh, that's all we have for today. Thank you for the presenters and everyone joining and watching the recording. And see you next time.